Mary Baker, come back. Howdy. Good afternoon, Rotary Club of Thousand Oaks. We're so glad you're with us today. It's a special day. We have our district governor here with us today, Deb Linden. So hi, Deb. Welcome to our club. Um, we have a couple of announcements, just uh, etiquette. So if you're not speaking, if you would please put your system on mute and then unmute when it's time for you to talk. Uh, please use the chat box to communicate with each other. Um, harass one another, whatever you feel is appropriate. And then also remember that we are streaming live on YouTube. So you can go over to the YouTube channel, Thousand Oaks YouTube, watch it there, communicate there. And if for some reason you miss all or part of the meeting, it is recorded and you can go to the Thousand Oaks YouTube channel and see it afterwards. Well, of course, this is another day, another exciting uh, preliminary round of the great joke contest. Um, this, this week is a real barn burner. Uh, we have uh, Susan Mad Splatter Barada, who is defending champion from last week, taking on a new contestant, which is Lois Scratcher in the eye, Kern Klein, who will be going at it. I'm going to turn it over to our ring announcer, Mr. Dave Massey, to get this started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our joke off. We have, as you know, made a random choice of who's going to go first in this amazing competition. We have our, our wonderful new champion, Susan, and the new contender, Lois. Lois, you are up first with your joke. Go on and mute yourself. Am I unmuted? Yes. Okay. What was Beethoven's favorite fruit? I don't know. What was Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. -na -na. Oh, <laughs> wonderful joke. Susan, difficult to beat. Susan, you're up. Thank you so much. So a husband and wife were out to dinner for their anniversary. The husband raises his glass and toasts to 50 wonderful years of marriage. It may not have always been easy, but I've always loved you and I've always been honest with you. And I hope you've always loved me and been honest with me. The wife replies, well, remember when we were first married and you lost your job? Well, I went down to the bank and I slept with the broker so we could get an extension on our mortgage. The husband was shocked and he says, well, honey, that was a long time ago and you did it for us. I forgive you. The wife then says, well, remember when you started your business and we didn't have any insurance and you needed that heart surgery? Well, I slept with the, the, the surgeon, so he'd do the surgery for free. The husband again was shocked. I can't believe I'm just hearing about this now, but I understand you did it for me and I forgive you for sleeping with those two men. The wife replies, well, here's the thing. Remember last year when you were running for Rotary Club president and you were trailing by 32 votes? <laughs> All right, terrific. Whoa, okay. We're going to launch the polling. We'll see who's going to go on to the next round. So we'll have about 30 seconds to cast your vote. Here we go. The poll is up. Cast your votes. Just to be clear, I did not vote for David, so that was not me that she was talking about. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, all right, let's do, let's go. We got another 10 seconds. Is it gonna be scratcher in the eye or mad splatter moving on to the next round? Five seconds to finish up voting. Four, three, two, one, that is it. All the results are in. I'm going to share results. It looks to me like, yes, oh. that splatter is moving on to the next round. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job, everybody. She'll be facing Michael Magnuson next week, and we'll look, off to, look forward to that joke contest. Michael, you're going to have a challenge. Yeah, this is going to be tough. It's a real knockout because the trophy that's being offered is so unbelievable. Everybody wants in on this one. All right, let's go to guest introductions. I'll turn it over to Jerry Robings, wherever he might be. 
Unmute. Thank you. Uh, we have two guests with us today, prominent guests. Our past president, Mike O'Byrne. Always pleased to have Mike join us. It's a pleasure. And the other Mike, of course, from the East Coast, Mike Habert. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. And we uh, we have our district governor, as I said, Deb Linden, and our sister district governor, uh, Brendan Garcia, is also here with us today. So welcome. And let's go over to Susan Murata, who's going to give us the inspirational moment and the pledge. So Susan, Mad Splatter, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, David. So I guess what inspires me, of course, is, is our Rotary Club and being a Rotarian. And I am so grateful and so proud to be a Rotarian. Um, I've been exposed to so many things that I never would have been exposed to if it wasn't for Rotary. So the other day I was outside in this heat and I was laying sod in my backyard. So obviously Rotary hasn't made me any smarter, but I came in and I got a big glass of, of ice cold water and took a drink and that brought back all of these memories of Father Remy. And those of you that have been in the club for a while know Father Remy. He visited our club several times and told us his story. And his story is he is a black priest from Africa. I think it was Uganda. And the Catholic Church brought Father Remy to the United States to learn, you know, to go to seminary and become a priest. And when he got there, they put him in a room, in his room, and he was shocked to know that his room was just for him. He didn't have to sleep with a bunch of people in his room. And more importantly, he had a shower in his bathroom where cool water came out and it was just for him to take a shower in. He didn't have to cook with it and clean with it. It was just to take a shower and he was absolutely amazed. And this story just touched me in, in, in so, so profoundly um, because his village doesn't have running water. In fact, it didn't have water at all. Every day they would have to take whatever vessel they had, a bucket or a jar, and they'd walk two and a half miles down the hill to a little watering hole that was used by the animals in the area and other villagers. And they'd load up their water vessel and they'd have to hike it back up the hill. And that's what he and his family and their little one room shack used all day for their needs. And he was at our club asking our club if we would partner with them um, and he was now a Rotarian in Uganda, if we would partner with them to start a water, a water project, a sustainable water project to bring them some fresh water. This impacted me so greatly. I mean, ever since then, I've looked at water differently. I, I don't run the water when I wash dishes or brush my teeth. More importantly, when I take a shower, and I know you don't need a visual of that, but when I take a shower, I turn the water off while I'm lathering up. I don't even run the water while I'm lathering up because it, it touched me so. But what touched me more than that was our Rotary Club did partner with him and other Rotary Clubs to uh, get a global grant to help this village bring water, something that we take for granted every day, bring water to their village. And I think about that all the time, that now they may not be water like we're used to, but they do have access to water every day. And I'm not asking anybody to stop, you know, turn your water off in your shower when you're taking a shower. Well, maybe I am because if all of us did that, we'd save millions of gallons of water. But I'm just saying, just be inspired by the fact that we are part of the greatest humanitarian organization on the face of the planet. And I am so grateful to be a Rotarian. And now if you go join me, oh, I've got a thing, I got a flag. <laughs> join me in the pledge. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United, United States, States of America and to, and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, One nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Susan. That was great. Um, we're going to do our song now, and as is the tradition, Typically, uh, now that we are on Zoom, we won't be singing because it would be a real mess with 62 free, 
people speaking at a different time. So we will be uh, hearing a video song today. This has been provided by Nancy Wall. And so I'm going to share that with you now. sung by the combined choirs of the United States Naval Academy, the United States Air Force Academy, the United States Military Academy at West Point, the United States Coast Guard Academy, and accompanied by the United States Army Herald Trumpets. for pulling that down for us. That was terrific. Uh, we're now going to move over to our ringmaster, Mr. Dave Massey, to lead us in a fine session. Well, since uh, Governor Deb is here right now, uh, Deb, I, I want to know, we do this fine session as many clubs do, and we find members uh, if they get the answer correct and a higher amount if they get it wrong. Deb, I'll let you set the fine amount today. What, what would you like it to be? Well, thank you, Dave. I, I think it's only appropriate that if members get the answer right, that it's $52.40 in honor of our district. And if they get it wrong, that's $100. And that's actually the amount to become a sustaining Paul Harris Fellow uh, every year. So uh, uh, let's keep supporting our clubs and our foundations with that. Thank you, Deb. Well, let's start the fine session off. I've got a uh, PowerPoint presentation somewhat created. Uh, tangentially in your honor, Deb. Um, it is wonderful to have the district governor here with us today and everything that uh, she's doing to help promote Rotary around the world. Um, so uh, first off, Deborah was born or was, was raised in Sunnyvale, California. So John Bradley, can you unmute yourself? So John, you there? Yeah, I think I got unmuted. Uh, uh, I can hear you, John. Terrific. John, okay. uh, John, who else is from Sunnyvale, California? Is it uh, actress Terry Hatcher, the is creator of Apple Steve Jobs, the musical group The Orange Peels, uh, the hip-hop artist Anton, just one and three, or all the above? I'm going for number five. You're going to go for number five? Actually, it's all the above. All these folks were from Sunnyvale, from where our district governor grew up. Now, they've got businesses up in Sunnyvale. Nikki Richardson, are you there? 
Nikki, go ahead and unmute yourself. Now, Nikki, uh, what is what is the company that employs the most residents in Sunnyvale? I've got choices for you. LinkedIn, which I wish would stop sending me emails. Walmart, uh, St. John's Bar and Grill, or Google? Who do you think employs the most residents in the city of Sunnyvale? LinkedIn. Link Actually, it's Google by a large margin. So uh, those are the amounts that people, uh, that, that the employees there, and Google's almost 11,000 people uh, in Sunnyvale. Uh, Michael Magnuson, you there? I see that. Michael, who is standing next to you or sitting next to you? Uh, that's Sky. Gorgeous one dog. Two, it's one of my two Pomskys. Very nice. Now, uh, Michael, Deborah got her bachelor's of arts degree in sociology at UC Santa Barbara. What is the mascot for UC Santa Barbara? Is it the banana slug, the knights, the gauchos, or the Isla Vista irons? Uh, I'm going to go with number three, gauchos. That's absolutely correct. It is the USB gauchos. Uh, uh, Tony Guevara, good to see you here. Can you unmute yourself? Got it. Hey, Tony. Um, Deb began her law enforcement career as a deputy in Santa Barbara at the age of 22. Uh, what procedural crime show is based in Santa Barbara? Is it Psych, CSI Miami, Charlie's Angels, or Cold Case? Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angels. No, actually it's Psych. Charlie's Angels was from Los Angeles. Now you'll be paying $100 evidently. Apparently. Uh, <laughs> Pat McCoy, you there? Unmuted myself. Thank you very much. Pat, one of the things that Deborah did while she was in law enforcement is she was a narcotics detective. Now, the biggest drug bust in U.S. history was a seizure of 39,525 pounds of cocaine out of one of the ports out in, uh, in I think it was uh, Philadelphia, okay? This is a measurement question for you. Uh, how much weighs, uh, how much does 39,525 pounds weigh? Is that approximately 14 Asian elephants, 22 Yugos, or 371 Hulk Hogan's? Well, uh, I'm going to go with Hulk Hogan because that just sounds funny. <laughs> I agree with you. It actually isn't Hulk Hogan's. It would only be 130 Hulk Hogan's. The man is 302 pounds. It was Yugos. 22 Yugos would be about the same amount as that huge amount of cocaine seized. Um, Michael yeah. Jensen. You there, Mike? Michael, you up? I can't tell if you're with us. Which Michael were you calling on, David? Uh, Michael Jensen, our international chair. Oh, Michael, we didn't, we missed your, the last name. Okay. Mikey there? I think he's trying to hide out. I think that's a hundred dollar fine for not responding. So we can just add him to the, yeah. I think so. Uh, all right, I can't so unmute. Oh, there, Here, oh, I unmuted you now? Oh, there you go. Oh, all right, I Mike. unmute, sorry. <laughs> all right, Mike. Um, yes. Deb was hired as the police of, the chief of police for the county of San Luis Obispo back in 2003. Who's the police chief from the Simpsons? Is it Abe Simpson, Rod Flanders, Clancy Wiggum, or Hans Molman? Uh, Clancy Wiggum. Of course it's Chief Clancy Wiggum. We couldn't forget him. All right, um, Jason Corey, you there? I'm here. Terrific, Jason. Um, Deborah has married her, her wonderful husband, Bill. What famous Bills from Saturday Night Live had the catchphrase, oh no? Was it Bill Murray, Mr. Bill, Bill Handler, or Billy Crystal? I do believe that's, oh no, it's Mr. Bill. That is, oh no, it is Mr. Bill. That's correct. My last question here, um, Jessica Sawyer. You there, Jessica? I'm here, I'm sorry. That's okay, terrific. Um, Deb is part of the San Luis Obispo Rotary Club. What projects has the San Luis Obispo Rotary Club done? Did they create a viewing platform at the SLO Regional Airport? Did they create 
uh, at Trope Park, uh, uh, create a park at Trope Park and the ch uh, children's play field at Tech School? Did they install an exercise course at Laguna Lake? Did they build a bandstand at Mitchell Park? What did they, or, or did they do all of those things? Oh, I'm gonna say all of the above. Well, of course it's Deb and she's in a great club with great members and she did all of the above. Deb, I hope you enjoyed your fine session. and Everybody, thank you very much for participating in it. All right, thank you, David. Great job, well done. Well, it is that time again to go to Mr. Fun Time himself, Pat McCoy. And I don't know if his sidekick, Ben, is still there with them, but my, uh, I'm turning it over to you, Fun Time. Where are you? Here I am. Let me. Uh... He's on screen two for me. Okay. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, Naomi, better known as Lana, is not here. Oh. So I'm all by myself today. Oh. So this is our poker uh, poker chip draw. The name that I pull out of this pot, this bowl, if your name is on it, <clears throat> you win $5. If your name is not on it, it goes on the next week and it goes up to $10, $5 increments. Okay, here we go. And this is the lucky name. <laughs> Me. <laughs> oh, oh, sure. Okay. Figures he'd cheat when Vanna wasn't there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he didn't nail me back. <laughs> wow. Is Pat really here? Yeah, they really. all say Pat. Well, I'll tell you what I do. I'll pick another one. <laughs> okay. There we go again. again. The odds. There we go again. <laughs> you back in there before you picked another? Yeah. Who's, what were you saying? We just okay. don't want it to come up pat again. No, you're going to have to really screen it. Yeah. <laughs> it probably don't have names on. He's just making Crystal it up. Crystal Doyle. I don't think she's here. Okay, uh, we'll go on the next week. $10 next week. You'll be able to get a happy mail next week if you that's stay right. on and, and are here. So that's fantastic. Before I leave, I wanted to introduce another fun thing. The way this is, works is I just pick somebody random from who's on the screen right now. And I ask them the question, if I were a, and I is you, okay? So I'm gonna pick somebody. Oh, here's a person that never gets picked, Jeff Bornstein. <laughs> this is your question for you. If you were stranded on a desert island, what three items would you want to have with you? Oh, I'd button. say the Washington Post, the New York Times, and uh, uh, you can fill in the third one. The Washington Post and the N New York Times. In other words, you'd like to stay current with the news when you're I on a vacation. I love vacation. staying current. Have on a, a des <laughs> deserted <laughs> island. Okay, one more. Uh, let's pick somebody here. Uh, KT, unmute yourself. If you could only choose one vacation destination, where would you pick and why? Um, the planet Earth. The pl you love Mother Earth so much. <laughs> Any place on this yes. Earth works for you. It could be in my backyard. You'd be happy. Especially if there's wildlife. <clears throat> I could use the company. Okay, one more. <laughs> Hopefully this person's gonna be very, very interesting as well as my first two people. My favorite, Carol Freeman. Are you there, Carol? Unmute mute yourself. And Carol, this is what I want you to do. I want you to open up your purse or your desk, pull something out and share with us why it's important to you. Well, I'm sitting in the old booth from Dupar's in my basement because it's 100 degrees upstairs. But I happen to have with me, and this was not fixed. You're going to love this. All right. Look at that. Banner Year. It was, it was the insert, I think, Sunday, maybe, on uh, the Banner Year Women's Suffragette. Uh, yeah. I love that I found that. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. That wasn't even fixed, was it? No, it wasn't. Fantastic. <laughs> Okay, next week we'll be back with uh, a continuation of our poker drawing and uh, two truths and a lie.
Thank you, Dave. Great, Pat. Thank you so much. That was terrific. Uh, we're going to go to announcements. Uh, Karen, you are up first. Unmute. There you go. Yeah. Um, I hope he's not on here, but this is about um, one of our former members, um, Steely Dan Overton. I think a few of you remember him and how much fun we made of him as he come, came up to lead us in song every, every week. Um, he and his wife, Casey, are moving out of the area, and their friends and their family are arranging, since they can't do a regular party, they're arranging for this Saturday to have a drive-by farewell to them. Uh, I am getting the um, email ready to send out to the club, so when you get that, um, please, if you can attend, that would be terrific. It will give you instructions on where to go, what time, but it's basically going to be from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. this Saturday. And they live um, right off, they live right off, right in the heart of Thousand Oaks. So there will be instructions where you'll come from any area and you'll be lining up at the curb. Um, he loved to bet, wear anything Western. So if you want to dress up, you could do Western wear. If you want to decorate your car, if you want to bring a card, you can hand to them. Or there will be an address where you can actually send them a card to say goodbye. He was a beloved um, member of our club. They did a lot of stuff for us. Uh, and we want to wish them well. So look for that email. If you don't get it for any reason, please let me know. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, we missed Dave? it. Yes. Dave? Yes. Um, this is Nate. Um, I also want to add to that, that um, this gathering for Dan is a surprise to both of them. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So please do not say anything to either one of them. So the email I just sent saying, I'll glad to see you Saturday was probably not appropriate. Not good. Thanks. Okay, sorry about that. Well, all right. Uh, let's go to Dave Massey. He's got some kind of a, a flim flam scam going on in the near future. So, uh, Dave, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Dave, I appreciate the uh, noble introduction. Uh, the one of the things that we're trying to do is look for new fundraisers because our tried and true uh, fund three fundraisers are, are are just can't happen effectively like we want them to do for obvious reasons. Um, one of the things that, that Mike Hebert, one of our former members who's joining us now, has talked about is doing some sort of online poker event. Um, and so um, 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 Martin Anderson and I are working to put this together. And so if you are a person who likes doing online games, we would love to have you be part of our committee. If you're a person that wants to help us do some level of fundraising uh, for this, we'd love to have you in our committee. So I'm looking for committee members who are interested in helping us kind of make this happen. And hopefully we can raise some bucks to help give to our charities uh, because uh, we gotta be we gotta be creative in what we do right now. And a lot of people enjoy doing this and we may be able to raise some good money for some good charities. So please let me know if you're interested. I will send out a club email to everybody, but think about it. And this is a way you can get involved instead of just you know rewatching Netflix again, come, uh, Come, come and join us for something like this that we can really make an impact while we're still so restricted. Thanks. Great, thank you, David. Um, let's go over to Ian real quick. Give us an update on our 5240 campaign that we launched a few weeks ago. Tell us how we're doing. Well, uh, so far we're doing pretty good. Um, it's, uh, I keep in contact with our uh, treasurer who tells me that checks keep coming in. I have some checks to send in, as a matter of fact, today. I would say we are, as of the first month of doing it, 15% um, of the way there, which isn't bad since we have to the end of the year. Um, so if you are sick of hearing from me, um, I apologize, but you're gonna hear from me more until we get to 100% participation. Plus there's some other fun stuff coming up as far as um, every Rotarian every year. So uh, do your best to either block my emails or keep me from calling you, but you'll be hearing from me. But we're doing well, just so you know. So I am very happy to tell everyone, uh, thank you very much who have donated so far. And if you have yet to, because like me, you are uh, forgetful. Uh, I will be happy to remind you. All right. Thank you, Ian. Yeah, very important that that really helps us uh, for district grant money for our global grants. And we're very actively involved in both those areas. So all the money you contribute makes a huge difference, both in our club and other clubs across the world. 
Uh, I want to remind you, Jennifer's not here today, but don't forget the olive oil tasting that's coming up September 4th. You have a couple more days to email her or you can put your name in the chat box that you're joining. We're up to about 22 people uh, that are joining the olive oil tasting. It's going to be a great time, a really fun event. So hopefully you'll uh, do that. If you wait more than a couple more days, you will not be able to join because they have to ship the kits out to you. So please go ahead and do that. Fireside chats are coming up soon. Um, we are going to do those online this year. So we will have a group meeting all together for a few minutes and we're gonna break out into various uh, rooms with your small groups to uh, do some fun things. So again, um, you'll be getting emails on this, but you can put your name in the chat box uh, that you want to uh, be a participant in that. And then we would love to have you uh, join us. We're gonna have some really fun time together. All right, so that's it for announcements. Next, we wanna go over to a very special time. We have some awards to give away today and uh, I'm gonna share my screen um, with you uh, as we start that process. And uh, let's get that up. <clears throat> Give me one second here, we'll get started. Everything's a little slow, all right. So the first, uh, the first one that I wanna do today is uh, 11 years of perfect attendance. So uh, Tanya, congratulations. Uh, 11 years, perfect attendance, your pin is on its way. Thank you for, for that, great job. We have another 11 years of perfect attendance. Uh, Lois, who was uh, in the joke contest today, also 11 years of perfect attendance. So congratulations to both of you for setting great examples on uh, making all the meetings for 11 years. That's so impressive. Uh, now I wanna turn it over to Deb. She has some very special awards to give out to our members today. So Deb, I will turn it over to you and I would recommend that you put it in speaker view um, or if you want uh, grid view, but speaker view will, will be better. So Deb, I'll turn it to you. Thank you, Dave. And it is um, absolutely my honor to um, help your club present uh, some uh, eight Paul Harris fellows today. And I love, this is one of the best parts about my job is being able to do this. And the Paul Harris Fellow uh, honor is named for Paul Harris, who founded Rotary with his uh, three business associates in Chicago in 1905. The fellowship was actually created in his honor in 1957 to express appreciation for contributions of $1,000 or more uh, to the humanitarian and educational programs of the Rotary Foundation. These programs include an array of projects that save and invigorate the lives of people around the world and enhance international friendships and understanding. Foundation programs include educational opportunities, food, potable water, healthcare, immunizations, shelter for millions of people, and so many other uh, causes around the world. And these activities are funded, implemented, and managed, managed by Rotarians and Rotary clubs around the globe. And so these eight members who are being honored um, have uh, contributed significantly, and it's, it's my honor to present uh, Paul Harris Fellows, um, starting with uh, Michael um, Magasin. Michael, did I just butcher your last name? Um, who is getting his Paul Harris Fellow plus one, so his second Paul Harris Fellow. Congratulations, Michael. Trevor Tylock, I know I'm killing these last names. Paul Harris plus three, so a total of four uh, for Trevor. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, Jim Friedel, Paul Harris Fellow, plus four as well, so five total. Jim, you are halfway to major donor status. Congratulations. Michael Jansen, uh, also Paul Harris, plus four. Michael, thank you so much for your support uh, of the Rotary Foundation. Uh, Michelle Ness, uh, Ness um, Nash, I'll get it. Uh, Paul Harris Fellow, um, plus four and plus four. Five, so a double whammy. So thank you, Michelle. That means uh, six total. So that's fantastic. Paul Dryman, Paul Harris plus five. 
uh, or six. It's a great run. Uh, Dave, Paul Harris plus eight. You have the three rubies in there. Nine total under only one away um, from major donor. And also Judy St. John, same thing, Paul Harris Fellow plus eight. So nine total Paul Harris Fellows. So thank you all for your continued commitment to the Rotary Foundation. Uh, super important that we support our foundation and these great Rotarians have certainly demonstrated that today. Thank you, Deb. <clears throat> now we have uh, four other uh, really special awards. Um, for some of our major donors that have moved into major donor status to the foundation. So Deb, I will turn it back over to you. Great, thank you, Dave. And uh, major donor status uh, begins um, at uh, a cash contribution, either one time or over, over uh, time um, to the Rotary Foundation of $10,000 or more. And I say cash because uh, Rotary Foundation points do not count toward major donor status. So when anybody reaches a major, major donor status, that means that they have contributed $10,000 actual dollars or more. And starting with uh, Ian, who uh, just achieved uh, major donor status level one at that $10,000 level. And this is fantastic. Um, and one of the, one of the ways to, to get there is to do donations directly online, recurring donations to your credit card. And this adds up very, very quickly. So Ian, thank you so much for joining uh, our major donor ranks. We really appreciate your support. And our second is Bob Lewis, also major donor level one at that $10,000 level. Bob, thank you so much. And the next one should be Mike Murphy. Mike, thank you. And Mike has uh, been involved for a number of years at the district level as well. So Mike, great to see you as a major donor. And then a very special one, Susan and Mike Morata, major donor level two. And uh, Susan and Mike, this is awesome. Major donor level two is $25,000 or more cash donation uh, to the Rotary Foundation. And this can be done either cash or through, through your estate planning commitment. There are a number of ways to get there. So um, Susan and Mike, incredible. Thank you so much. This is just making my entire month to be able to present you uh, with a major donor level too. So thank you so much for your support. Yes, thank all of you for all your contributions. They make a huge difference to our club and, and to the Rotary International Foundation. So thank you for your generosity. It is my uh, pleasure to present a special award today. Um, this is to one of our Rotarians. It's the Thousand Oaks Rotarian Service Award. And this year, I'm, I'm very pleased to present this award to Mr. Larry Baker. Um, Larry has, uh, you know, as a large club with administrative and fundraising and charitable giving and grant making activity, all in the accounting system, Rotary Club of Thousand Oaks has a very complex system when it comes to managing money and gifts and putting money out, <coughs> and all those things. So Larry took on the job of executive treasurer in 2001, and he served in that capacity until June of 2020, 19 years of unbelievable dedicated service by Larry. He provided timely financial reporting to 19 different boards, and trust me, that is a job with 19 different groups of people all running around asking for stuff. All the committees every year assisted in the budgeting process and so much more that we really <clears throat> can't even describe it all in today's limited time. If in a look back <clears throat> over, <clears throat> excuse me, those many years, <clears throat> it's worth noting that Larry has processed, get this, over 30,000 invoices, over 50,000 received deposits and payments. He wrote over 20,000 checks, completed over 550 bank reconciliations. And I'm sure his favorite part was he attended well over 150 board meetings. So, um, <laughs> You know, under, under his steady hand, our club really achieved a reputation for solid financial standing and good stewardship. And it was due to Larry's incredible efforts and time commitment. I wanted just to have Chris still give us a little story about Larry and- uh, <clears throat> Okay, can, can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay, so um, as someone who's worked with Larry a lot and, and know him very well, I just wanted to say a few words about um, his journey as our executive treasurer. Um, long ago in the land of 5240, the kingdom called Rotary Club of Thousand Oaks, there was a young Jedi known as Larry. This unsuspecting warrior agreed to take on the job of executive treasurer when no one else would do it. Hmm, there must be a reason for this, he thought to himself. Nevertheless, he bravely accepted the quest for the kingdom he served. Over the years, Jedi Larry, <clears throat> excuse me, served 19 different administrations, bravely facing new challenges and oftentimes crazy requests without complaint, always with a smile. Like the post office of the before times, he delivered balance books and bank reconciliations on time, month after month, year after year, no matter the weather. Our brave Jedi endured having to sit at the naughty table for all those years, breaking bread with a rotating circus of treasurers. Eventually, Jedi Larry, still young-ish at heart, <clears throat> became known as Darth Vader, signifying his stature as a fearless wrangler of street fair vendors and overall defender of our rotary dollars and cents. As Darth approached the end of his 19th year of service as our executive treasurer, he decided it was time to vacate that naughty table and walk amongst his fellow Rotarians, able to sit at different lunch tables with club members who are grateful to him for his unwavering service. Larry is and will remain the man, the legend, the Darth. Thank you very much, Larry, and congratulations. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. And thank you, Larry. A well-deserved uh, congratulations from the entire club for your years of effort and service. We, we really do appreciate it. Thank you all. <laughs> all right. Um, we have a new uh, award that we're doing this year. It's called our Rotarian of the Month. And that, that is a person in our club who has done something extraordinary in our community to make us proud as a club. And we have decided to uh, designate that with a, a yellow <laughs> sash that has the uh, person's name embroidered on it. And uh, we will give this away every month for service being done in the community. And so this year, the, this first month, I'm very pleased to announce that our Rotarian of the Month for July is Jessica Sawyer Rubenstein. Yay! Oh, thank you. So Jessica <laughs> um, just really has exemplified service above self since she's joined our club. You know, this this is awarded to somebody who's really working in the community. So this will, as you can see, the sash is on the left, and we will run through the months as we go through the year. So Jessica really was um, instrumental in starting this project. Um, she launched it, she thought about it. It's the Baby Gear Project. It has a tremendous impact in our community. She gathers up with other uh, Rotarians, uh, good condition baby gear to give the, to the Ventura County Rescue Mission's Lighthouse Project from others that do not have items for their children. It's really a great way to reuse and help our community <laughs> directly and particularly in these times, very creative, very thoughtful. And this is what exemplifies our club. So congratulations to thank Jessica you. for Rotarian of the Month for a great job, well done. So thank you, Jessica. <laughs> thank you. And we will get that sash to you so you can wear it at the next meeting, even though we're online, we will love to see you in the sash. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. I would like to turn this now over. I will stop screen share. I would like to turn it over to uh, our assistant district governor, our group for fearless leader, Mr. Brendan Garcia, who will introduce our, our district governor and, and we will then turn it over to her for the program. So Brendan, welcome and it's all yours. Wonderful. Thank you, Dave. And, and hello, everyone. Um, uh, I'm obviously working from the same source material as David Massey. 
um, Deb's bio, I know, was was posted on the invitation. Uh, and so I'll, I'll cut it a little bit short after some uh, furious Googling. I think Deb's uh, former past exper uh, career experience uh, have taught her to cover her tracks very well. I couldn't find any interesting facts online about you, Deb, real quick there. But um, I, what I will say is that Deb joined uh, and joins us from the Rotary Club of San Luis Obispo. Uh, she joined the Rotary Club of San Luis Obispo in 2003. She served as a club president, district conference coordinator, assistant governor, district chief operating officer before being selected and serves as District 5240 governor for 2020 and 2021. She's been married to her wonderful husband, Bill, for 24 years, and they enjoy two adult sons, Trevor and Craig, five-year-old grandson, Kobe, and two-year-old boxer named Co uh, Kona. Uh, and so it's with great pleasure that I introduce uh, Deborah Linden, our district governor for 5240. Great. Thank you, Brendan. I really appreciate it. Yes, I think you got my uh, bio during the fine session. So that was a, a fabulous way of, of doing it and really fun. Uh, thank you for that. And before I share my screen and, and get started, um, let me congratulate your club on your latest global grant approval. I now get all of the communications from the Rotary Foundation regarding global grants. And I know that on July 1, your grant in partnership with Tijuana um, for the Aid for Children and el Elderly was approved for $59,000. You guys are fabulous. You continue to be fabulous. So congratulations on your latest uh, global grant. Uh, and with that, I am gonna go ahead and share my screen. And let me just bring up the video panel again. And Karen, shake your head if you can see my screen okay. Perfect, thank you. Um, all right, well, it's great being with you. I wish I was there in person, but at least we have this alternative. So I'd like to start out by asking you just to do something for me for a minute. I'd like you to sit back and imagine what your community, what the community of Thousand Oaks would be like if your club never existed. I can't possibly list everything that you've done and that you continue to do for your community. Uh, from big projects like the incredible Dreamcatcher Playground um, to smaller projects that we can do during COVID, such as the one that you just talked about uh, with your baby gear collection and giveaway, your support for so many organizations, hospice, James uh, Storehouse, Senior Concerns, your international projects with many different countries such as Mexico, India, uh, Asia, and South America. Um, you folks do so much. And during COVID, it's very easy to feel constrained uh, because we can't get the whole club together to do a huge playground project. Um, and we have to make an impact in different ways. But I wanna remind you how important you are and how relevant you continue to be in your community. And don't let these times discourage you. Everything you still do in, in large and small ways continues to touch lives and continues to change lives within your community of Thousand Oaks and throughout the world in partnership with your international partners. So just know that and keep positive and keep finding opportunities um, to serve your community, even during the, the times when we're restricted from being together. Our theme this year is Rotary Opens Opportunities. And this theme was selected by our RI president, Holger Knott. He's from Germany, he's a wonderful man. Um, and he picked this theme long before COVID was on anybody's radar, but it has been, become really, really relevant uh, to the times we're in. And he talks about looking for opportunities in everything we do, how we're doing our membership, our service, our fundraisers, how our very clubs operate. Um, and especially during COVID, finding opportunities that may initially present themselves as challenges, which I know your club is doing and you're adjusting beautifully uh, to this environment. I do wanna spend a few minutes talking about our focus for the year. And uh, this is sort of big picture district-wide focus. You will see that um, there, uh, our goals for this year district-wide are entirely aligned with your club goals as well. And so that's the good news is we're, we're marching down the same freeway in the, in the same direction. And our district goals are organized around what we call three essential elements for vibrant clubs. These uh, elements will be very familiar to your club president, Dave, because 
all of the training we provided to our presidents for two years before they took office was centered around these three essential elements. And they are membership, brand, and the Rotary Foundation. So starting with membership, this is our highest priority um, district-wide. And not only this year, but for the foreseeable future. And the reason is, is simple, is that our membership is declining. In many of our clubs, unfortunately, including yours, throughout the district and throughout North America. And so we are putting a lot of focus and time and attention and not only supporting our, our clubs in, um, in, in, in supporting our clubs and in increasing membership and retaining their members, but also looking for opportunities for new clubs and new types of clubs. Clubs like satellite clubs. I just had a conversation with your board about this. Um, clubs that look and feel different from ours. And we are only constrained from, by, by our own creativity. Right now with Rotary, we can create almost any type of club we want um, that can meet completely online. They can be focused on a certain cause. They can serve a certain demographic. We're actually exploring in, in a different area of our district, um, the concept of our very first primarily Spanish speaking club uh, to serve that, that specific demographic in, this, in that area. And so we can do anything, almost anything we want to do. And what, we're, what we need from you is ideas. And so um, it, as you think about your own community, as you think about where the gaps are with Rotary, and as you consider new ideas that, um, that may be able to serve prospective members in a different way from our traditional clubs like yours and mine, please bring those ideas forward because we need them. Um, taking care of our exist, exist, existing members is so important right now especially those who aren't necessarily joining our Zoom meetings every week, reaching out, making sure they're connected, making sure they're okay, making sure they're informed and making sure we don't lose them from our clubs during this time. And finally, finding creative ways to continue service is super important to keeping our members and really important to, to actually recruiting new members during the time of COVID. People are still joining our Rotary clubs. They're joining virtually. Um, and one of the reasons and one of the things that's working is clubs are getting really good and their members are getting good at sending those meeting links and meeting invitations out to a whole lot of people and inviting them to meetings. It's much easier for guests to attend because they don't have to go anywhere in person. They just have to click a link. So I encourage you to continue to invite people as guests and continue to recruit um, during these virtual times. I wanna share with you um, a, a quote that I love and I think really speaks to the times we're in. It's by Mother Teresa. Not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. And so even though we may not be able to gather together to do big projects, we can all still do our part and still serve our communities in many small ways and it all adds up. Our second element is Rotary Brand. And we, we tend to think of the brand as what's over my shoulder as our logo. But, but, the, but when we talk about the Rotary brand, we're talking about the entire Rotary experience. So how our members, how our visitors, and how the public perceive and experience Rotary. And that starts right here with our meetings. Whether they're in person or virtual, it doesn't matter. The experience we create with our club meetings is critical to recruiting new members and keeping the ones we have. And I can tell you just from being with your board and being with you today, you are doing everything right. Um, you, it, the, your meetings are fun, they're entertaining, uh, they're funny, um, you, in, you engage with each other. It's obvious that you care deeply for each other and you make visitors like me feel very welcome and, and, and very warm. And that's really important. People don't, don't join Rotary because of when you meet or necessarily what you're doing, they join because of you. They join because they wanna be part of this experience in this group and share what you're doing. And so keep it up, it's fantastic. I love your meetings. I was taking notes on some of the, the cool things that you do during the, your meetings to share um, with Dave's colleagues as well. Making sure that we're getting the word out about what our clubs are doing through traditional media, through social media, very important. And finally, making sure our service projects themselves are branded with signage and make sure people know it's us when we do a project and not the Elks or the Kalanas or somebody else in our community is important as well. Just a quick note about club meetings. Maya Angelo said that I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. 
and this is all about that this, this experience, the meeting experience, and when we gather together, whether virtually or in person. Um, they're not going to remember what was said. They're going to remember how they felt when they were part of that experience. So I want to share with you a brand new uh, uh, public service ad uh, campaign that Rotary International actually has created. Um, they've hired a marketing firm, and these are ads that are airing throughout North America. They've produced two uh, so far, and these are now available for um, clubs to download directly from the brand center. So they're available in 15 second, 30 second, and 60 second versions. They're really nicely done. And you can post these on your websites. You can share them on social media. If you have media contacts in the community that can get them on the air, please use them uh, for that. And so I just wanna give you an example. This is a 30 second spot um, and there are shorter and longer spots as well. Did that play okay? No, was it choppy? Ah, too God. much noise, too much noise. Boy, sorry about that. And I'm plugged directly into the modem. So something's going on with the system today. Um, anyway, take a look on the Brand Center. You can download these really well done. Um, and what happens when people go to this section of the website, they can not only learn more about Rotary, but they can actually express their interest in becoming a member. They can fill out a little online form that generates what's called a member lead and that gets transmitted to the district. And we have a process with our assistant governors to get that lead to our clubs. Um, so uh, uh, the, the ads are really good, take a look at them. So finally, I wanna talk for a minute about the third element, which is the Rotary Foundation and our need to continue this to support the foundation, which you guys do beautifully. Your support for the foundation is so strong and thank you for that. Um, uh, you've already talked about, know about the 5240 challenge, uh, so I won't mention that, but it's a way to encourage giving to the annual fund earlier in the year before December 31st. We are continuing the Peace Club program and we're just uh, refreshing the criteria for that. And so um, look for more information on that as well. Um, I like to remind people, super easy to give to foundation online, directly online, and to set up recurring giving to your credit card. And finally, I wanna talk about polio for a minute, um, but I wanna do this in a little bit of a different way. Um, you're all familiar with Jeopardy? Shake your heads. So we're gonna play a game of polio Jeopardy. So if any of you have seen this before, like I know Brendan has, then you're disqualified and no fair Googling polio and rotary during this. It's gotta be out from your memory. So I'm gonna flash some numbers on the screen one by one all related to polio. If you think you know what the number means, just unmute yourself um, and just shout out what, what you think the answer is. And I can't see everybody, I can see some of you, so you'll just need to unmute and shout out. I won't be able to see you raise your hand. Okay, first number, 2.5 billion. Anybody wanna take a guess? Vaccinated. Children. Children that have been vaccinated? Yes, thank you, Paul. Yeah, so 2.5 billion is the number of children that we have vaccinated so far worldwide with the Polio Plus campaign. That's billion, it's not million. It's tremendous. <clears throat> um, and I like to remind wow. people that our Polio Plus project, it did not start with the board of directors sitting around going, let's do a big project. It started with a club. It was a club project to vaccinate children in the Philippines. And that started our now worldwide polio eradication effort um, that we have an incredibly robust network of volunteers and paid workers and labs throughout the entire world. We work in partnership with the World Health Organization, Gates Foundation, almost every country and many, many, many different humanitarian organizations. All right, second number, $1.8 billion. Is that how much we've raised to fight polio? Uh, how much who is raised? 
thousand oaks rotary or not that thousand uh, that uh, that, <laughs> that rotary history. yes thank you dave yeah you rotarian have raised and donated over 1.8 billion dollars over the last 30 years to the polio campaign amazing support and we cannot let our we can't we can't lift our foot off that gas pedal yet um, we are so close and we've got to close that gap and get to zero. So we need to continue to support polio. Okay, <clears throat> up two. Number of countries oh. that do, are not yet fully vaccinated. Yes, thank you, Matt, Mike. So the number of countries that still have endemic polio and Mike, extra credit, which countries? Pakistan and Afghanistan. <laughs> Bingo, that should be a double jeopardy question right there. Excellent, <laughs> yeah. So we are down to two countries. We started with 140 countries with endemic polio and we're down to two. Now, these are the two hardest countries um, because of the very fluid borders and it's very dangerous for our workers in those countries. We do have the cooperation of the government in both countries and of, um, uh, of the religious leaders as well. And so, and, and, and we're making great progress in those countries. Here's the really good news. Up until a month ago, this number would have been three but Nigeria was just declared polio free, which means all of Africa is now polio free. And that means that they've gone three years with no wild polio virus cases. Huge, huge achievement. Okay, last number, hardest number, my favorite number. Ready? 17.4 million. Any guesses? So I'm going to give you the kids answer. helped. No, well, I'm going to tell the NI, uh... NID. No, I'm going to tell you the answer, and you'll see immediately why it's my favorite number. Seventeen point point four million people would be paralyzed today from polio were it not for our polio vaccination campaign. Mm -hmm. And so, kind of let that sink in because it really personalizes it. 17.4 million people would be paralyzed today were it not for us. And so I really encourage you to continue to support polio. Um, I just rolled out last week um, a really fun personal fitness challenge called Step Up for Polio. And you all got an email about that. Um, uh, I'm sure Dave <clears throat> can take that out of his archives and resend it. But it's a way that you can actually um, uh, uh, set a personal fitness challenge and raise money for polio. It's sort of a district, it's a, it's a multi-district project as, uh, actually. And so look for that and we'll include it in our um, September 1st newsletter that you'll all receive as well. Okay, a few announcements hot off the presses. We are about to have our very first woman Rotary International President in our 115 year history, which is fantastic. Jennifer Jones has been nominated to be RI President in 2022, 2023. Uh, pending any challenges before October 1st. The challenge period is still um, open. She is fabulous. She is smart. She's an incredible leader. She's from uh, Ontario, Canada, um, and she will be a great RI president. So we're very excited about that. Uh, the Rotary Foundation has designated a seventh area of focus, which is supporting the environment. And this joins our six, six existing areas of focus, peace and conflict resolution, disease prevention and treatment, water and sanitation, maternal and child health, basic education and literacy, and economic and community development. And what this means is that clubs will now be able to, or soon, be able to do global grants and access TRF grant money for projects that support the environment. Uh, the, the trustees are developing the criteria for this brand new area of focus as we speak. And then clubs will actually be able to apply for global grants under supporting the environment area of focus starting July 1 in 2021. So once we get more information and the criteria, we will certainly roll that out uh, to our clubs and our members as well. But it's pretty exciting because it's saying that the environment is now a priority of the Rotary Foundation. And our district conference is going virtual. It was going to be in San Luis Obispo, um, November uh, 6th through the 8th. And it will now be virtual on those same days, kicking off with a party for polio on Friday night, November 6th. With, we have some really fun surprises uh, planned for that. And then um, we'll have smaller segments both on Saturday, uh, uh, have plenary sessions Saturday morning and Sunday morning, 
and then a whole host of breakout sessions that you can choose from um, on Saturday afternoon. And so smaller chunks of time, so you're not sitting in front of your computer the whole day. Uh, registration will be open within the next two weeks. And guess what? The cost is super cheap, 25 bucks a person for the entire conference. So you can all now attend a, a, a conference, attend the, our first virtual conference. We're really excited about this new opportunity because it will allow so many more of our Rotarians to attend the conference. So look for that information to come out. So what is your call to action for this year? First of all, just be bold and be a Rotary superhero however you can. Um, whether it's serving your community, serving your club, helping your neighbor, whatever you can do during these weird and difficult times um, is just strive to, to do that. Be creative. We need your ideas. Your fundraising and community service committees need your ideas. Now is the time to get creative with how we're doing things and to look for opportunities to do things differently. And finally, just continue to be kind. Um, we're in a time of, of stress and conflict in many different ways. And so really now is the time to, to um, remember to, to be kind to, to everybody, to make sure your club meetings are inclusive and welcoming, to make sure that we're listening to and appreciate other people's perspectives and experience. Um, this is a quote from Charles Dickens that I just love. No one is useless in this world who lightens the burden of another. And this is something we can all live by as, as Rotarians. We are all, all bound by a common vision. So this is Rotary's vision statement. Together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe in our communities and in ourselves. And this is what binds us, not only us today together, but all 1.2 million of us um, throughout the world. And I love this vision statement. So now one of my favorite parts of my club visits is I guess to present a surprise award. So we're, we're awarding at every club meeting, I'm giving out a District 5240 People of Action Award. And this is to one of your members who has gone above and beyond in some way to serve your community or serve your club. Uh, the member is selected either by your president or by your board, depending on your club process. And so I'm thrilled uh, to present this award to KT Connor today. <laughs> KT, congratulations. And let me just um, read some information that, uh, that Dave sent me about why KT is receiving this award. Uh, KT was foundation chair last year and works tirelessly behind the scenes to raise money for the foundation. She also creates the club bulletin, the, the uh, ACORN each week and uh, promotes Polio Plus in the club. She commits a significant amount of time and energy to Rotary all while, keep, while keeping a very busy work schedule. So KT, thank you so much. Uh, for your service to your club and the community. I do have an actual certificate for you with a People of Action pin, and I'll email you to confirm your address, and then we'll I'll get that in the mail to you. And so with that, President Dave, it, it concludes my presentation, and I am more than happy to uh, take any questions about anything from your members if there's time to do that. All right. Thank you so much, Deb. That was terrific. We appreciate you sharing with us. We do have um, a couple of minutes um, that we can take questions. So if you have a question, if you would either, you know, hit the reaction button, thumbs up, clap, raise your hand. I will try to see you and take you in order. So if anybody has a question, go ahead and, and let's start that process. And I do, Dave, I see one in the chat from, is it Tracy? Um, asking me to share a little information on the new club that just opened. Yes, so um, Westlake Village Sunrise just chartered a satellite club for young professionals. And so a satellite club is basically an arm of the existing Rotary Club uh, that meets, normally meets at a different time and different, uh, you know, day and time and location and often caters to a specific demographic. So in this case, um, uh, it's, a, it's a club uh, focused uh, primarily on young professionals. They chartered with 14 young professionals who are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And they actually are, are now, I think they're approaching 18 already. And they were just chartered a few weeks ago. Um, and so they are all members of the Rotary Club of Westlake Village Sunrise, but they're sort of a separate entity. Uh, members can go to either meeting or both meetings um, and they have their own set of of rules and their own focus within that satellite mm -hmm. club. 
And so it's a satellite clubs are a great <laughs> model, um, especially it's much easier to charter a satellite club. Um, you only need eight members to start a satellite club um, rather than the 20 that you need to start a regular rotary club. And so it's really um, a, a great concept and I can certainly send your club more information about satellite clubs. Great, thank you. Does anybody else have a question? I had a question. Did okay, I misunderstand or is there a Spanish speaking club you mentioned? We're looking at one, um, we're just, uh, this just came up um, uh, this last week that we're, there's a small group that we're starting a discussion about maybe opening one in the Ventura Oxnard area, or just looking at, at, um, at kind of doing the, the feasibility study of one in, the, in that area, um, especially with you know, a, a high, high percent, percentage of Spanish speaking residents there. And so we wanna look if one might be appropriate in that area. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have time for one final question, if anybody has a question. Okay, I don't see anybody's hand up. If I missed it, go ahead and unmute. All right, very good. Well, Grant, thank you, Deb, for uh, being you. with us today. We we greatly appreciate it, and for <clears throat> Brendan, for your your being here also. Um, we don't give any big cash prizes out for you being here, Deb. So sorry about that. But we do give a uh, a book to a Title One school in your honor with your name in it, and that will be awesome. going out. We also wanna give you uh, on behalf of the club, a Paul Harris fellow, um, which we will be doing in your name for uh, you on behalf of our club for your great wow. job this year and leading us through a very good, difficult time for being here with us today. Um, wow. We will also be sending uh, both Brendan and uh, Deb a uh, olive oil tasting kit to be a part of our olive oil mm. tasting coming up on September 4th. So hopefully They'll be able to attend as well as a lot of others here. I have it well, on my calendar and thank you very, very much. I'm really looking forward to it. And thank you so much for the for the honor of the book and the and the Paul Harris Fellow. That's incredibly generous. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we will uh, close off here. I want to thank the greeters, Karen and uh, Nikki, for your jobs today. Jerry for uh, guests. Nancy Wool for selecting and sending us the song today. Susan Murata for inspirational moment and pledge. Dave Massey for fine session and ringmaster to the joke contest. Fun time Pat McCoy for all the good times we had on the poker draw and the what ifs. And just remember this, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, and catch the trade winds in your sails. Explore, dream, and discover. So says Mr. Mark Twain. So let's go forth there, Rotarians, and make a big difference in the world, in our communities and internationally. <clears throat> and that's all there is for this August 20th, 2020. See you all next week, and thanks for being here. Thank you, Bye, everybody. everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>